At my wedding with Anton Smith, my sister said she had been reborn. She ran up on stage crying and threw herself into Anton's arms. It turns out that the person who loves me the most is you. Don't marry my sister, I don't want to miss you again. With just one sentence, Anton cancelled our wedding. Echo, we'll talk about the wedding later. I took off my veil and placed it on my sister's head. There won't be a later for us. The atmosphere is already here, you two should get married today. Dean! Wis Novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. The wedding proceeded to the vow exchange and the officiant asked Anton. Anton Smith, do you take Echo Fox to be your wife, to love her, to be faithful to her, in poverty and in sickness, until death do you part? Anton glanced at the crowd below, as if searching for someone. But he didn't seem to find them, I could see a hint of disappointment on his face. Yes, I. Before he could finish, the chapel doors were suddenly pushed open from the outside. It was my elder sister, Rena Fox. She had said she was going on a boat trip with her boyfriend and wouldn't attend the wedding, so why did she suddenly appear? My heart skipped a beat, a sense of foreboding washing over me. Rena was soaked from head to toe, looking pitifully at Anton, who was about to become my husband. I'm sorry, Anton, I'm late. In front of all the guests, she ran up on stage and threw herself into Anton's arms. Turns out you're the one who loves me the most in this world. I'm sorry, Anton, I realized it too late. Although Anton's expression was bewildered, his hands honestly embraced her. It was an instinctive action. I watched as his expression changed from confusion to surprise to secret joy. Finally, he gazed deeply into Rena's eyes. I started to believe Rena's words. It turned out that the man I had been in love with for six years had always loved my sister. They embraced obliviously, their emotions running deep, and as their lips drew closer, preparing to kiss. I coughed to interrupt them, Anton, are we still getting married? Rena seemed to notice me in the wedding dress for the first time. Don't marry my sister, okay? I've already missed you once, Anton, I don't want to miss you again. She started crying, looking so pitiful that it tugged at my heartstrings. I had meticulously prepared for this wedding for a year, and to stand beside him in a wedding dress, I had started working out and dieting six months in advance. In my heart, I begged Anton not to embarrass me at this moment, but after a moment of hesitation, he still chose to cancel the wedding. Echo, Rena is not in a good state right now, can we postpone the wedding? What does her state have to do with our wedding? But I wouldn't ask him that. At that moment, it felt like something inside me was suddenly released. I took off the pure white veil and placed it on Rena. No need to postpone the wedding. The atmosphere is already here, why don't you two get married today? I'll make room for you. It's your wedding now. After I left, the wedding was cancelled. When they got home, Dad glared at me and went to the balcony to smoke. Mom pointed at my head and scolded me. Do you have any manners? There were so many guests, and you just left like that. How are your dad and I supposed to face people after this? The one who ruined my wedding was clearly my sister, Rena Fox, yet she didn't have to face any blame. Since coming back, she had been lounging on the couch playing with her phone, her lips curved in a bright and smug smile. I guessed she must be chatting with Anton. I left the wedding decisively, but that didn't mean I wasn't upset. Along with their attitudes, I felt even more aggrieved. This was the first time I had ever talked back, Rena said she and Anton are true love. You and Dad have always taught me to yield to her. How could I dare compete with her for someone she likes? Rena finally shifted her attention from her phone to my face. Are you blaming me? I smiled, Rena, you misunderstood. Rena rolled her eyes at me and continued lying back on the couch. If Anton loves me, what can I do? It's your own fault for being useless. Yes, it's my own fault for being useless. But that doesn't justify her ruining her own sister's wedding, right? What happened today was beyond my expectations. Rena, who always looked down on Anton, suddenly claimed they were true love. And she kept saying she was reborn. I was pondering how to get more information out of her. Mom asked first, Rena, what's going on between you and Anton? Rena pouted and looked at Mom with grievance, Mom, I really was reborn. 
In my past life, I suffered a lot, and in the end, you and Dad didn't love me anymore. When I was about to die, Anton came back from abroad for me, and that's when I realized he loved me so much. Mom's expression showed she still didn't believe it, but I thought there was some truth in Rena's words. Rena, this, this is too absurd. I deliberately continued to probe. You don't believe me? Rena glanced at me disdainfully. Then she handed me her phone. This was my old phone number, I stopped using it, but Anton kept sending me messages. Echo, whether you believe it or not, Anton loves me. I recognized that it was indeed Anton's phone number. Scrolling up, there were messages he sent her years ago. I saw you on the street today. I wanted to say hi, but you always have so many friends around. I've liked you for a year, but you don't even know my name. Rena, can we go to the same high school after middle school graduation and continue being classmates? Your sister became my junior. Since I can't be your husband, I'll continue loving you as family. What a great love story. If I weren't the victim, I might even want to applaud them. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that Anton shouldn't have been in the same middle school as Rena. He clearly told me he attended middle school at the affiliated school. When I came out to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, the light in Rena's room next door was still on. The door wasn't fully closed, and the light squeezed through the gap, falling onto my feet. I was about to leave when I suddenly heard my mother's voice coming from her room. Rena, if Ken finds out about your tantrum today, what will happen? The Ken my mother mentioned is my sister's current boyfriend, Ken Vabern. The Vabern family is very wealthy, and my parents have always been very satisfied with this future son-in-law. Compared to Ken Vabern, Anton Smith seems quite ordinary. His family background is average, and his job is average, so my parents initially disapproved of my marriage to him. It was only after my persistent insistence that they eventually chose to compromise. Ken has such good conditions, how can that Anton compare? Are you as blind as your sister? I knew my mother always looked down on Anton. I stood by the door, waiting for Rena's response. Because I was also curious. If it was just because Anton loved her, Rena would never give up Ken Vabern for Anton. She's not someone who values love above all else. Rena is very selfish, she only loves herself. Mom, you can't be so short-sighted. Don't just look at how wealthy Ken's family is now, they'll go bankrupt in the future. And Anton will keep getting promoted until he becomes the head of a branch office. My mother still didn't believe it. Really? Really, otherwise, with Anton's current poor appearance, would I choose him? Don't be fooled by how he looks now. He's actually very talented. His boss has been promoting him all the way because his proposals are so well written. So that's it. But Rena only knows that Anton will become wealthy in the future. She doesn't realize that everything Anton has is because of me. The proposal she mentioned, the one that earned Anton recognition, was written by me. Otherwise, with his nearly failing college credits, how could he have the bright future Rena talked about? Mom, please help me. Help me win over Anton, or I'll be very unhappy in the future. My mother hesitated. But he's supposed to marry Echo. Mom, you said when I was little that I was your only precious daughter. I stared at the light on my feet. All right. You said it yourself, Anton has always had feelings for you. It's Echo's own fault if she can't hold on to him. I took a step back, and the light disappeared from my feet. I stood entirely in the darkness. So in my mother's heart, Rena has always been her only precious daughter. But haven't I always known this? From a young age, my parents were always biased. In other families, the older siblings would let the younger ones have their way. But in our family, the most common thing my parents said to me was, let your sister have her way. The pretty dresses were for my sister to wear first. Only when she didn't like them anymore could I have a turn. All the snacks at home were bought for her, and I couldn't eat them. When I was little, I secretly ate some out of greed, and my sister found out. She slapped me multiple times across the face. I fell to the ground crying, but when my mother came in, my sister cried first and accused me of stealing her snacks. My mother kicked me, saying, you want to take everything and even steal? 
why don't you steal rat poison and poison yourself to death? At that moment, I forgot to cry and looked at my mother in disbelief. I couldn't believe my mother would curse me like that. I never understood why, even though we were both their children, they treated me so differently from my sister. Later, I found out that my arrival was never welcome. I was an accident. My mother wanted to abort me, but my father, fearing it might be a boy, persuaded her to keep me. They had a big fight about it. It was my sister who said she wanted a little brother to play with, and that's why my mother agreed to give birth to me. But my birth disappointed everyone. I was a girl. Not the son my father hoped for, nor the brother my sister wanted. So my name is Echo, meaning repeat, extra. Even though I always knew deep down that I wasn't loved, hearing it now still hurt. Before, I could find some excuses to comfort myself. Now, I can only accept that I am indeed an unwanted child. Hearing footsteps, I knew my mother was coming out. I hurriedly wiped away my tears and turned to hide in my room. My mother paused in front of my door for a moment and then complained softly. If I hadn't given birth to Echo, wouldn't we have avoided so many troubles? I took a week off for the wedding. Early in the morning, my mom woke me up to help her make breakfast. Young people shouldn't sleep so much. Hurry up and wash the vegetables. But Rena was still sleeping. The doorbell suddenly rang, and it was Anton Smith and his parents. After hearing what Rena said last night, whether my mom believed it or not, her attitude towards Anton had significantly improved. She thought they were here to see Rena, so she quickly went to call her. Unexpectedly, Anton's mom said, Dear in-law, we are here to apologize to Echo. Echo? My mom glanced at Anton awkwardly. Rena had already come out of her room, and mother and daughter exchanged a look. Anton's mom acted as if she didn't see Rena and came over to hold my hand. Echo, it's Anton's fault. He was immature. Last night, we already talked to him. Can you, for the sake of your many years together and for my sake, forgive him this time? We'll hold a new wedding. His dad and I have discussed it, and we'll pay for a more grand wedding. In the past, Anton's parents didn't particularly like me. They thought I was too capable, excelling in everything compared to Anton, and worried he wouldn't be able to control me after marriage. But now, when they had to choose between me and Rena, they unhesitatingly stood by my side. I looked up at Anton, who was exchanging affectionate glances with Rena. The two of them were standing together, holding hands in front of everyone. Mrs. Smith, please don't make things difficult for me or for Anton. Following my gaze, Anton's parents immediately turned cold. Anton tried to pull his hand back, but Rena held on tightly, looking at me provocatively. I inwardly mocked Rena for being such a fool. Sure enough, Anton's mom angrily slapped him. Did you forget what you promised your dad and me last night? We lowered ourselves to plead for you, and this is how you repay us. Rena loved to put on a show. Seeing Anton get slapped, she immediately wanted to speak up for him. Mrs. Smith, you can't. Shut up, you shameless hussy, seducing my son. Seducing your own brother-in-law, how did your parents raise you? My parents couldn't stand to see Rena being bullied and stepped up to protect her. Watch your mouth. It's your son who's shameless, dating Echo while still having feelings for my eldest daughter, Rena. The two families argued fiercely, with Anton's parents blaming everything on Rena. My parents threw the blame back at them. After they had argued enough, Anton's mom turned to me again. Echo, I've always considered you my daughter-in-law. It's not easy for you and Anton to come this far. I handed her a tissue. Wipe your tears, Mrs. Smith. Then I turned to Anton and asked the question that had been bothering me. Anton, you left messages for my sister saying you were middle school classmates? But I clearly remember you telling me you went to the affiliated school. Were you lying to me? Anton was stunned for a moment. He might have anticipated some of the questions I would ask him today. Asking if he ever loved me, or why he treated me this way. He had prepared answers for those questions. But he didn't expect me to ask a completely unrelated question. This question was insignificant to him. But it was very important to me. He was stunned for a moment, then nodded. 
At that time, you said you were from the affiliated middle school, so. I lied to you. You said you saved a little girl from drowning. Was that also a lie? Anton hesitated, I did save someone, but it was during a school drowning demonstration. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. No wonder he always changed the subject or said he forgot whenever we talked about the affiliated middle school. It turned out that from the very beginning, I had made a mistake. He was never the Anton Smith I was looking for. Anton and his parents had already left. After they left, my parents cursed out the Smith family again. They said we don't know how to raise a daughter, but is their son any better? Seeing me grabbing my bag and getting ready to leave, Rena stopped me. Where are you going? I was in a hurry to leave and didn't have my usual patience with her, so I frowned and retorted, what's it to you? Of course, it matters. Are you going to find Anton? Echo, do you have any shame? Seeing that I dared to talk back, Rena started jumping and crying. Anton and I truly love each other. Why are you trying to break us up and be the third wheel? I was greatly shocked. Let's not even talk about how I'm not interested in Anton anymore. Rena, who between us is actually the third wheel? Rena slapped me across the face so fast that I couldn't dodge it. The one who isn't loved is the third wheel. Seeing my parents approaching, I knew that if I didn't make a move now, I would have no chance to fight back once they stood together. I pushed Rena, making her fall against the shoe cabinet. I rushed up and slapped her twice in return, then whispered in her ear. Anton's mom was right, you shameless hussy. Rena covered her face in disbelief, crying and calling for our parents. Before they could come over to avenge Rena, I had already opened the door and ran out. Standing in the elevator, I could still hear my mother cursing outside. If you run away, don't come back. I shouldn't have given birth to you in the first place. I shouldn't have given birth to you in the first place. I've heard this phrase countless times since I was a child. The city has changed a lot over the years, and my parents have moved several times. From one end of the city, step by step, to the other end. The affiliated middle school was far from my home, and it was already noon by the time I arrived. The guard was having lunch, and I asked him if I could go in. The guard looked up from his plate, glanced at me, and then nodded. The honor wall of the school had changed many times, and many of the teachers who used to teach me had already retired. After much difficulty, I found an older teacher. Do you remember Anton Smith? So many years had passed, leaving only a very vague shadow in my memory. Hesitating for a moment, I added, he was in the same grade as me, or maybe a year ahead. The teacher smiled apologetically, there are so many new students every year, I really can't remember. Indeed, after all, so many years had passed. After walking around the school, I couldn't find any trace of the past. Forget it. If I really can't find it, then forget it. Just as I was leaving the school, I accidentally bumped into a man carrying things out of a bookstore. I apologized while helping him pick up the old newspapers that had fallen all over the ground. These are all old newspapers, can they still sell? The man smiled, yes, they can. Unintentionally, I saw a stack of newspapers from 15 years ago and was attracted by the name Anton Smith on them. Seeing me in a daze, he looked at the newspaper and said, this Anton Smith was a student at the affiliated middle school back then. He was quite an excellent young man. I nodded, and a tear suddenly fell on the newspaper. You know him? I nodded and then shook my head. Do I really know him or not? The year I was entering middle school, I got into the affiliated middle school, but Rena, with her poor grades, could only go to a private school. In the past, her dislike for me was just minor squabbles. It wasn't until I attended the affiliated middle school that I truly felt she wished I were dead. The time Rena pushed me into the river, I begged her desperately to save me. But she just stood there, watching me struggle in the water as if she were enjoying the sight of an ant. It wasn't until someone saw me and jumped into the river to save me that she ran away quickly. The person who saved me was wearing the affiliated middle school uniform, looking like a kid about my age. Anton Smith. Before I passed out from choking on water, I heard his friend call him that. Later, I woke up in the hospital after a few days. As soon as I woke up, my parents hurriedly sent me to my grandmother's house in the countryside. 
I guess that maybe they also knew it was Rena who pushed me. But they chose to remain silent. Before getting on the train, I asked my mom, how is the person who saved me? I can't remember my mom's exact expression at that moment, I only remember her saying, he's fine, now get on the train. Looking back now, she might have been feeling guilty. That's probably why she was so eager to get me to leave. Later, I finished middle school and high school in the countryside. After the college entrance exams, I wanted to go back and thank my savior. But my parents wouldn't let me go back. They said, why would you go back? The round-trip fare is so expensive, isn't it better to stay in the countryside and keep your grandmother company? A lot happened that summer, my grandmother passed away, so I had to postpone my plan to see him. But on the first day of college registration, a completely unfamiliar senior told me his name was Anton Smith, and he also graduated from the affiliated middle school. He also said he once saved a little girl who fell into the water. Everything seemed too coincidental. So I naturally assumed he was my savior. I helped him get food, saved him a seat, and took care of him more attentively than his own mother when he was sick. Everyone around him said I was a devoted simp, but I knew I just wanted to repay his life-saving grace. Later, even Anton himself thought I liked him. He acted like a gentleman and confessed to me, so we naturally got together. At that time, I really thought he was moved by me and fell in love with me during our time together. Until Rena claimed she was reborn and showed me the thousands of messages he sent her. Only then did I realize there was no such thing as love growing over time. It was just that Rena didn't want him, so he settled for me and chose to marry me. But to be honest, I didn't really love Anton either, otherwise, I wouldn't have chosen to walk away directly at the wedding. I knew he was weak-willed and lacked ability. Even the proposal he submitted to get a permanent position at the company was done by me. All these years, I've been helping him, making him appear capable in the eyes of the leadership. It seemed like the only reason I could continue to endure being with him was that he was my savior. So after knowing that he loved Rena, I could so easily and comfortably give him up. I looked at the newspaper I got from that man. The boy in the photo was only 14, smiling shyly, with the corners of his mouth slightly raised. I thought he would have grown up to be an excellent person. But unfortunately, to save me, little Anton would forever remain 14. I read the words praising him over and over again, selfless little hero Anton Smith. I'm sorry. I whispered. It was Rena who pushed me that year, so she indirectly caused the death of little Anton Smith. And my parents, knowing all this, chose to send me to the countryside, shielding the murderer. That night, I didn't go home. Anyway, even if I did, they wouldn't let me in. Just as I found a hotel, Rena sent me a message. I opened it. It was a photo. To be precise, it was a photo of Rena and Anton in bed. I glanced at it, turned off my phone, and started washing up. Seeing that I didn't react, Rena called me directly. Don't waste your effort. Anton will definitely marry me. I spat out the water in my mouth and slowly said, then I wish you happiness. To be honest, I'm really grateful to her. If it weren't for her, I might never have known that I had mistaken the wrong person. But Rena thought I was being sarcastic. Echo, stop being sarcastic. In my past life, I didn't know anything, which allowed you to have him. In this life, I will take back everything that belongs to me. Rena still thought I wanted to compete with her for Anton, but now I had no interest in him. Compared to Anton, I was even more interested in her. She said she was reborn. So I asked her, Rena, are you really reborn? Then what was my ending in the past life? In the past life, you took the position of Mrs. Smith that originally belonged to me, resigned, and lived a life of luxury at home. So in this life, Mrs. Smith can only be me. Indeed, if I married Anton, I would eventually choose to compromise. His parents didn't like me being too strong, always overshadowing Anton. From Rena's words, I could roughly guess my story in the past life. Resigned to be a full-time housewife, then helped Anton with planning and schemes at home. Supporting him to soar in his career, and finally helping him become the head of a branch office. But I am obviously a very ambitious person. I clearly want to carve out my own world in the field I am good at and become a queen standing at the top. Rena, thank you. I sincerely thanked her, but Rena thought I was mocking her. 
Let me tell you, Echo, even if you were Mrs. Smith, so what? In the past life, until the day Anton died, the one he loved in his heart was me. So you'd better not cause any trouble. He never loved you from beginning to end. Don't be shameless and cling to him. I didn't hear a word she said after that. Standing in front of the hotel's floor-to-ceiling window, the outside was sparkling with stars. And the me who wouldn't marry Anton would also have a shining future. The next day, when I got home, I found that my parents had already changed the lock. I knocked on the door, and my dad cursed at me through the door. Didn't you run away? Then die outside and don't come back. Okay. I took out the old key from my bag and left it at the door. After leaving, I rented an apartment near the company. After tidying up, I called Anton. I'll come to your place tonight to get my things. I originally didn't want to go, but since we used to share the rent, some company documents were still in the room over there. Anton was home alone. When he saw me, he suddenly asked, Where have you been these past two days? None of your business, I said calmly. Can I go pack my things now? Anton was stunned but stepped aside. After I entered, he kept following me. Echo, my parents still hope we can get married. What do you think? That day his parents went to my parents' house, and I thought my attitude was clear enough. So I ignored him and carefully packed my things. Seeing that I didn't respond, he got a bit annoyed and ran a hand through his hair. Stop making a fuss, okay? Isn't my apology enough? He kept talking to himself, but I didn't respond at all. When I finished packing and was about to leave, I found my bag was missing. I thought I had left it in the living room, but when I went out to look, Anton was holding that newspaper and asked me. What does this mean? I was carrying the same bag as yesterday, and I forgot to take out the newspaper. While packing, I had left my bag on the desk in my room. I didn't expect him to take it without my noticing. I snatched the newspaper back and frowned unhappily. Didn't your mom teach you not to touch other people's things? My attitude might have angered him. Anton loudly asked again, Echo Fox, what the hell does this mean? It means nothing. I used to think you were him, but I mistook the person. After saying that, I tried to leave, but Anton blocked the door. Mistook the person? So what am I? Echo, what do you take me for? A substitute? Did you ever love me? It's strange. He used to be like this too, emotionally unstable. But I always tolerated it. Now, I just found him very annoying, extremely repulsive. I even looked him up and down, but I couldn't find a single good point about him. Consider yourself lucky to have the same name and surname as him. Otherwise, do you think I would have given you a second glance? Get out of the way. Don't block the road. The photo Rena sent me of her in bed, I forwarded it to her ex-boyfriend, Ken Weyburn. She brought this upon herself. When Ken confronted us at home, I found out she was still with her ex while sleeping with Anton. What I thought was a minor emotional squabble turned into Ken making a huge scene at our house. Now the entire neighborhood knows that Rena is two-timing, sleeping with multiple men. Rena, haven't I been good enough to you? I give you so much spending money every month, and you use my money to keep a gigolo? Ken tried to rush at Rena, but my dad stopped him. During their scuffle, seeing my dad was old, Ken didn't dare to really fight. But my dad, with a burst of strength, pushed him to the ground hard. Someone in the crowd suddenly shouted, The police are here. Rena took one look outside, then suddenly pulled my dad to the ground, crying out, Ouch, ouch. Officer, he hit someone, Rena pointed at Ken, accusing him first. My dad cooperatively lay on the ground, sometimes saying he hit his head, other times saying he broke his back. I smiled and said nothing. Rena is convinced Anton will become very successful in the future. But right now he's just an ordinary employee who can't afford the high expenses Ken used to cover for her. So now that everything's out in the open, she plans to extort him for more money. I looked up at the hallway confirming there were no cameras. Ken was now in a tough spot with no way to clear his name. I need to go to the hospital, take me to the hospital, I can't take it anymore. My mom also came out crying, saying Ken hit someone. 
The three of them were putting on a show, and it looked like the police were about to take Ken away. I suddenly spoke up, he didn't hit anyone, I have the whole thing on video. The three of them immediately fell silent. My mom was the first to recognize me in the crowd, Echo? Why are you back? We've already cut ties with you. Reno looked at me but said nothing. I just squeezed through the crowd, smiling as I handed my phone to the police. Actually, I don't know Ken Vabern well. I didn't do this to help him, just to thwart Rena. As I was leaving, Ken, who had already explained everything to the police, caught up to me, thanks for earlier. I smiled and said nothing. Ken continued, you're really nice, not at all like your sister said. What did my sister say about me? Ken swallowed his words. Even without him saying, I could guess that Rena had probably badmouthed me plenty in front of him. Echo, let me treat you to a meal to thank you for helping me earlier. I said it wasn't necessary, but Ken kept following me. He talked a lot, and I was getting annoyed, so I stopped and stared at him. Do you really want to thank me? Ken nodded firmly. I took a newspaper out of my bag, can you help me find his family? Ken looked at the name on the newspaper. Without asking any questions, he nodded. Don't worry, I'll definitely help you find them. He wasn't boasting. With his family's resources, finding someone wouldn't be difficult. I heard that Anton's parents eventually agreed to his marriage with Rena. I hadn't planned on attending their engagement party, but Rena called several times to boastfully invite me. Sometimes I really don't get it. Inviting your boyfriend's ex to your engagement party, what is she thinking? Even my parents called to scold me. Echo, do you have any conscience at all? She's your sister, can't you give her your blessing? I could still hear Rena crying on the other end. Dad, does Echo hate me for taking Anton away, is that why she won't come? So on the day of her engagement to Anton, I went as she wished. When Anton saw me, he looked uneasy, you're here. I smiled and nodded, then took my seat. That intense gaze didn't leave me from the moment I walked in. Until I heard Rena's angry voice, Anton, how long are you going to stare at her? The one getting engaged to you today is me. Her voice was loud enough for all the surrounding relatives to hear. Anton, embarrassed, immediately tried to stop her. What are you talking about? Stop making a scene. Halfway through the engagement, my phone suddenly rang. Even though the ringtone wasn't loud, Anton heard it and looked at me again. I held up my phone and turned to look outside, smiling sweetly, wait for me, I'm coming out. Anton followed my gaze to see the man at the door. His expression immediately turned sour. I walked to the door, glanced back at Anton, and then left. In the car, Ken glanced at the rearview mirror, he's following us. I looked indifferent, let him follow. Just as I thought, Anton, this scumbag, would never truly love anyone. His decade-long affection for Rena was more of an obsession, a desire for what he couldn't have. Once he got it, the so-called unattainable love became just a grain of rice on his collar, no longer worth lingering over. So, just like he embarrassed me at our wedding, he abandoned Rena at their engagement party to come after me. For men, the unattainable and the lost are always the best. Ken was very quick and had already helped me find that little Anton's family. The person who opened the door was a man. After we explained our purpose, he looked at me deeply for a few moments. Suddenly, a woman's voice came from inside the house, Honey, who is it? He turned back and replied, Someone we don't know, they knocked on the wrong door. Then he turned back to me and said, That's my wife. After our child died, she had a mental breakdown. We don't blame you, this was Anton's choice, but please don't come here again. As I was leaving, I asked him for the location of Anton's grave, and he generously told me. But when we arrived at the cemetery and just got out of the car, Ken was suddenly pushed down by a figure. I hurriedly went up to block Anton, who was about to make a move, are you crazy? Anton laughed angrily, Echo, do you have no shame? Rena took me away, and now you're with him? You see, some people's hearts are so dirty that everything they see is dirty. I turned around and asked Ken to wait for me in the car, took the flowers he handed me, and entered the cemetery alone. Anton still followed me like a stubborn shadow. You can accept Ken Vayburn, 
but why can't you forgive me and be with me again? Just a few hours ago, he was getting engaged to Rena, and now he had the nerve to ask me this. I ignored him and walked straight ahead until I found the tombstone with Anton Smith engraved on it and stopped. Anton, who had been following me, went berserk like a wild dog when he saw the name on the tombstone. He grabbed the flowers I placed in front of the tombstone and threw them away. Echo Fox, how dare you treat me like this? Some things he just couldn't understand. So I slapped Anton directly in the face, don't go crazy in front of me. In the past, when I spoke to him nicely, Anton seemed not to understand. Now, with a slap, he became obedient and immediately quieted down. Sure enough, if you can solve something with action, there's no need to talk much. He stood there looking at me for a long time. Echo, I was wrong. Anton glanced at the name on the tombstone and begged me in a nearly humble tone. Forgive me, and I'll forget about him. He pointed at the tombstone. Can we start over? I looked at him like he was trash and coldly refused, no. Echo, don't be like this. We've had so many years together. I don't believe you never loved me. You used to, you clearly loved me very much. His tone even carried a trace of grievance. But what exactly was he feeling aggrieved about? After so many years together, didn't our relationship fall apart because of one word from Rena at the wedding? Can you get lost? Don't disgust me. After leaving the cemetery that day, I didn't see Anton for a long time. I just heard that Rena was pregnant and was demanding to marry Anton, but this time Anton was unwilling. Recently, our company had a collaboration with Ken's family company. After finishing the business, we ran into Anton as we left. He was in a bad state, thin as a skeleton just out of a coffin, with a ghastly pale face and a miserable look. Ken and I pretended not to see him and were about to leave when Anton suddenly rushed over. He looked at me, then at Ken. Why are you two together again? Ken pushed him away, what's it to you? This scene was just seen by Rena, who came looking for Anton. She ran over to protect him. Ken Vayburn, I told you we broke up. Stop pestering me. Ken and I exchanged a glance, both feeling that these two were out of their minds. Rena was carrying baby supplies, I guessed Anton was out shopping with her. Let's go. Just as we were about to leave, Anton pushed Rena away and clung to me persistently. Echo, can we start over? Give me another chance, please. His face, thin to the point of distortion, was covered in tears, making him look very unpleasant. Rena dropped her things and started pulling the kneeling and begging Anton while screaming. Now it wasn't just bad luck, it was also very embarrassing. When she suddenly rushed at me, I hadn't reacted yet, but fortunately, Ken stopped her. Rena, with her slightly bulging belly, went crazy on the street. Echo, you shameless mistress, seducing my fiancé, seducing your brother-in-law, you witch. She cursed viciously, her description extremely crazy. I didn't understand how the once beauty-loving and face-conscious Rena could have become like this. I slapped her face, and seeing she was about to continue spewing filth, I slapped her again. Are you clear-headed now? If not, I'll continue. She wanted to fight back but was held down by Ken and could only be obediently slapped by me. Echo, I won't let you go. I raised an eyebrow, still not clear-headed? I slapped her again on the face. And Anton didn't defend her from beginning to end. After the meeting, I came out to find dozens of missed calls on my phone. I checked, and they were all from my parents. I knew without thinking that it was because I had hit Rena, and they were coming to question me. During the meeting, the boss asked me to prepare to go abroad for the overseas market, and I had already agreed. I don't plan to come back in the future, and I won't have much contact with them. Thinking this, I opened the family group chat. There were hundreds of voice messages, almost all cursing me. In the end, both of them said they wanted to cut ties with me. Ungrateful wretch, from now on, we'll consider you dead out there. Today you dare to hit your sister, tomorrow you'll dare to hit us. We don't want a daughter like you. I curved my lips into a smile and turned off the phone screen. On the day I was preparing to leave, Ken personally drove me to the airport. Halfway there, someone suddenly blocked the car. It was Anton. Luckily, Ken braked quickly, 
or else he would have been dead here today. Ken got out of the car and grabbed Anton by the neck like a chick, throwing him to the side of the road. If you want to die, don't drag me into it. But Anton's eyes were fixed on me in the car. He appeared so coincidentally, he must have been waiting here in advance. Get lost, don't dirty my new car. Ken tossed him aside, but Anton got up again and blocked the car. His purpose was pure, just wanting to see me. I glanced at the time, not wanting to waste it on him. I got out and stood in front of him, accidentally stepping on Anton's fingers, then stepped back. If you have something to say, say it quickly and then get lost. Anton was in worse shape than before, his voice hoarse, please don't go, don't leave me. Finished? I asked impatiently, can you move now? As I turned to get back in the car, Anton suddenly rushed to the guardrail. Below the guardrail was a rushing river. Echo, I'm begging you, don't go, I was wrong, I was really wrong. He threatened me, if you leave with him, I'll jump down from here. Idiot. I laughed angrily and pulled out my phone to call the police. When the police arrived, I explained the situation and then got back in the car. In the rearview mirror, Anton watched my departing figure with despair in his eyes. Ken glanced at the rearview mirror, his face cold, he really jumped down. I looked away indifferently, with the police there, he won't die. Ignore him. Before boarding, Ken stopped me. Echo, if I pursued you, would you accept? After spending these days together, I had to admit that Ken was not the playboy wastrel Rena had described. We had become good friends. But it could only stay at the level of friendship. Since I was a child, I wore clothes that my sister didn't want, and the snacks were only given to me after she didn't want them. It's like I was always picking up her leftovers. I, Echo Fox, only deserve things she didn't want. Now I can finally get rid of her. So, do you understand? I believed Ken could understand. By the way, I suddenly remembered Rena saying his family would go bankrupt. Be careful with your family's business recently, be cautious. My career abroad was going smoothly, and on the day I became the general manager of the overseas branch, Ken specifically called to congratulate me. From now on, I should call you President Fox. Don't be so formal. I laughed, last time you mentioned your company was in trouble, how is it now? Is it resolved? Ken hummed in acknowledgement. Thanks to your reminder and the connections you helped me make to solve the funding problem. At the end of the conversation, Ken suddenly asked me, do you hate your family? I didn't answer whether I hated them or not, I just casually said. I believe in karma, good people will be rewarded, and bad people will definitely go to hell. I don't know if they'll go to hell, but your family is certainly like hell now. Ken told me that Rena's belly was getting bigger, but Anton still refused to marry her. He said he regretted it and wanted to wait for me to return. Later, Rena wanted to abort the child, but it was too late in the pregnancy, so she had to keep it. You don't know, she even came to me to reconcile. I had guessed it, after all, Ken's family didn't go bankrupt as she had said. Did you agree? Are you kidding? Am I that cheap? Rena threatened with two lives, and Anton finally agreed to marry her. With such a big belly, she still wanted a wedding, Rena is really crazy. As long as she doesn't mind the embarrassment. After a few days, Ken told me again, Anton Smith died, on the wedding day. I raised an eyebrow but didn't care much. I didn't even ask how he died. After Rena found out, she went completely mad, laughing and crying at the wedding, saying she was the president's wife. Your dad was so angry he was hospitalized, and your mom is now looking for you everywhere. They must regret it. I didn't expect this day to come so quickly. But when I heard these words, I didn't feel any satisfaction, rather I felt indifferent, as if I were listening to someone else's story. Oh. I responded faintly. I'll be returning home in a while. Ken's voice changed with surprise. Are you going to deal with them? No. I resigned, planning to start my own business. Working for others is not as good as being your own boss. He advised me, your connections are all over there, wouldn't it be better to start a business there? Outside the floor-to-ceiling window was the steel jungle of a prosperous city, and I had already carved out my own territory in this forest. I'll start the business here, just going back to handle some things. 
There was a moment of silence on the other end of the phone. But when he spoke again, his voice still couldn't hide the disappointment, well. I smiled and didn't take it to heart.